In our group, have you seen that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, again, I have given you uh, Ravi Singh's book, the chapters which are required for uh, unit number one. I have sent it to you. Have you seen that? Have you seen all the chapters? Okay, how to mark the syllabus on those chapters that I'll tell you. So to begin with, we'll start with that and then I'll share my screen to that. Okay, are you able to see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, in this, uh, initially, you have already done in first year, elect basic electrical engineering. Okay, so from that, you have to brush up the things. So which things you have to brush up will be in uh, your first chapter. Okay, so 1.5, 1.5 topic, sources, page number 1.14. This you have to revise, then 1.10, star delta transformation, that is on page 1.32, 1.11, which is source transformation, it is page number 1.51. Then source shifting, 1.12 point number, and it is on the page 1.58. And one more point, you know Ohm's law, you know Kirchhoff's law. So Kirchhoff's laws, that is 2.2 and page number 2.1. So till this, there won't be any question in the examination. But all these topics will be needing to solve the numericals, okay? So these you have to revise, brush up. And then the actual syllabus which will be asked in the examination, it starts from point number 2.3, that is mesh analysis. Mesh analysis, page number 2.20. In mesh analysis, there are three cases, as you know, we are already um, uh, till this point, we have revised the things in which you know that three cases of mesh analysis are there. First case is only resistive network is there and voltage sources are there. So along with voltage source, resistive network is there and you can solve this mesh. You can form different meshes, uh, take mesh currents and apply KVL and then find the mesh currents and then you can determine current through any branch. That is case number one. In case number two, there are current sources added in this first case, but the current sources are at the outer loop. That is, the current source is not common between any two loops or meshes. Okay. That is the second case. And third case is the if the current source is common between any two mesh or loops. So that is the super mesh. So this, we have already seen all these three cases. And one more case in this, this are, these three are for, that means we have seen all these three. One more you have to add in this fourth case is the dependent sources. 
till now we have seen all these three cases with independent sources independent voltage source and independent current source but now you have to see with dependent current sources also dependent voltage sources also so there are four types of dependent sources voltage controlled voltage source current controlled voltage source or voltage controlled current source current controlled current source so all these four cases will be there and all these four cases numericals will be there that is the fourth case you have to add in this mesh analysis and one fifth case you have to add is the ac analysis so for all these meshes ac analysis means the source voltage source will be ac as well as ac components you can add that is inductor capacitor so they will be added in the circuit and you have to take the impedance of the particular network so that is for mesh analysis so overall you have to find uh, you have to solve five cases for mesh analysis three which we have already completed and two we'll see so again we'll see from start scratch all five cases we'll see so that is page number 2.20 on this book point number 2.3 then next is the node analysis node analysis and super node analysis so that is point number 2.5 and page number 2.43 point number 2.6 page number 2.63 okay so this node analysis and super node analysis we have to restrict our uh, cells to only dc analysis that means only voltage and current sources will be there and resistances will be there there won't be any inductor capacitor or won't be any ac voltage present okay so dc analysis for entire unit and only ac analysis is for mesh analysis okay so for that ac analysis of mesh uh, sixth unit is there so this is second unit or then third unit is your uh, third chapter of this book is of network theorems and that is the next point of your syllabus four theorems are added superposition theorem thevenin's theorem norton's theorem and maximum power transfer theorem so that is in this chapter 3.2 point number 3.2 to 3.5 page number 3.1 3.30 3.64 and 3.91 so this entire plus your chapter number 6 of this book ravi singh's book which i have already given mesh analysis point number 6.2 mesh analysis page number 6.1 so this is application to ac circuit that is the fifth case which we have discussed in mesh analysis so this much is your entire syllabus of first unit and we need to start from right now so again i'll change my uh, i'll share the screen uh, i'll stop sharing this and i'll share powerpoint presentation yes is it visible powerpoint presentation yes okay so let us start with our syllabus electrical circuits unit number 1 basic circuit analysis and simplification techniques so what do you mean by electrical circuit electrical circuit is an interconnection of electrical components or basic electrical elements so a very simple circuit like a battery 
is connected to a lamp so there are elements like lamp is one element battery is element then they are connected with the help of wires so battery is a source so sources are elements of any electrical circuit the another circuit you can say it may be a receiver circuit or it may be a transmitter circuit so elements will be antenna then many transistors ic's resistance capacitance inductance amplifier maybe microphone okay maybe loud speaker so all these are the elements of electrical circuit and uh, uh, all these components they are connected with the help of few wires so this entire is a electrical circuit and in this subject we have to analyze all these electrical circuits okay you know ohm's law you know kirchhoff's laws kirchhoff's current law and kirchhoff's voltage law what kirchhoff's current law states kirchhoff's current law states that algebraic sum of currents meeting at a junction or a node in an electrical circuit is zero that is sum of currents which are entering in the junction is equal to sum of currents leaving from that junction you see this diagram particular diagram in which a node is there o node is there and five branches are coming to this node and current flowing through these branches are i1 to i5 let us say these are maybe entering to the junction or maybe leaving to the junction so in this case i1 current is entering the junction i3 is entering the junction and i5 is entering the junction so sum of i1 plus i3 plus i5 will be equal to the two leaving currents which are i2 and i4 so equal to i2 plus i4 so this is your kirchhoff's current law then kirchhoff's voltage law what it states this kirchhoff's current law is for a particular node or a junction and kirchhoff's voltage law is for a closed circuit or a closed path or a closed mesh so algebraic sum of the voltages amongst all the components and the sources is equal to zero amongst the uh, around a particular close path or a mesh in this mesh analysis the sign conventions are very important because there may be a rise in potential or fall in potential so how to identify rise in potential and fall in potential so let us say a dc source is there a battery is shown in figure a so for if the current is flowing from positive end of this battery to the negative end then it is a fall in potential energy is flowing from higher potential to lower potential so that is a fall if energy is flowing from lower potential to higher potential then it is a rise so if fall in potential is there then you have to assume that it is a negative sign and if rise in potential is there then you have to assume it as a positive sign so this is for a voltage source if it is a dc voltage source dc battery if current is flowing from positive end to negative end then it is fall in potential so you will consider it as a negative sign and if current is flowing from negative end of battery to positive end it is a rise in potential and we'll consider it as a positive sign okay then we'll see for the components if in a resistance if such is the polarity that is the direction of current is this the polarity across that resistance drop across that will be wherever current is entering it that terminal will become positive and wherever current is leaving 
that current is that terminal is becoming negative and if the current is flowing in this direction with this polarity conven uh, convention then it is current is flowing from positive to negative so it is higher potential to lower potential so it is fall in potential consider it as a negative sign and if it is the reverse case then it will be a rise in potential and will consider it as a positive sign so with these sign conventions we can mark it on any loop you can see in this particular circuit this is a loop or a mesh that is a closed path closed path closed circuit in which various components are there battery then resistances all are present so here we have marked whether the direction of current we have assumed it as a clockwise direction so let us say this is the direction of current clockwise and we have marked the potentials as plus and minus signs for these all these resistances and then we have seen the loop for this particular loop if the potential is rising then it will be a positive sign if potential is dropping then it will be a negative sign then it will be a negative sign and then so this cursor now you will be able to see so here it will be minus r4 into current then this is rising so it will be plus e2 then again minus r1 into current then plus e1 then minus r2 into current and again minus r3 into current so this will be the kvl for this particular loop let us see next slide so application of kvl to find current drawn by this ammeter let us say this is a circuit close path and the ammeter is connected over here we want to find how much is the current drawn by this ammeter okay so the values of battery voltage is given 9 volt resistance as values are given 5 ohm 10 ohm 5 ohm 30 ohm and we want to find the current through this so what we'll do we'll take this particular uh, we'll apply kvl for this particular circuit so initially we'll assume that i1 current is flowing in this branch i2 current is flowing in this branch so that in this branch the current flowing will be i1 plus i2 so entire current will come from this i1 will go here and i2 will go here again both this currents will come here they will combine and plus i1 plus i2 current will flow by this path okay so you apply kvl to this closed path a b c d a so if you will apply to this a b c d a so this particular path that is first loop if you will apply kvl to this how it will be always the drop across this resistance will take it as minus sign so it will be minus 5 i1 plus i2 is the current flowing through this then it is rise in potential so plus 9 then minus 10 into i1 plus i2 then minus 30 into i1 equal to 0 so this will be kvl applied for first loop then you can apply it for second loop so if you will apply kvl for this second loop that is b c e f d so for this loop if you will apply kvl let us start from this so it will be minus 5 i2 minus 30 i1 equal to 0 so with this you can get another equation so these two equations are with you you can solve these two equations and get i value as 0.4 ampere so that is the current flowing through this and the ammeter it is equal to 
0.4 ampere okay so similarly kcl for different nodes you can apply this kcl and find out the equations in terms of current so all these you know and skip this then various types of sources so what are the types of sources sources are the uh, sources means they are the energy uh, source so maybe a ac source or maybe a dc source so for this and analysis of entire these circuits we'll see it as a ac uh, sorry dc sources and only for mesh analysis we'll see ac sources so sources are of two types one is independent sources and another is dependent sources so what do you mean by independent sources independent sources they are independent of anything so independent voltage source and independent current source so independent voltage source is it may be your dc voltage source a fixed voltage independent means it will not at all vary with any other or under any circumstances its voltage or current or its magnitude will not change that is independent and dependent means they will depend on some other another parameter so if that particular parameter changes then your amplitude of this particular parameter will change so like this this is the independent voltage source that is a fixed dc voltage source it may be a fixed or it may vary with time so that is ac source so it is a voltage source or a voltage source dc or a voltage source ac so this is independent source voltage source it may be a independent current source so it may be a dc current source or it may be a varying with time so these are the independent sources then what are the dependent sources dependent sources they are voltage controlled voltage source current controlled current source so in voltage controlled voltage source don't do any annotation or otherwise i have to stop uh, your uh, annotations okay and you will be unable to see the highlighter my highlighter again okay so don't do any annotations so the voltage controlled voltage source that means any voltage vab this voltage will control this particular voltage so this is a actual voltage source which we are applying in the circuit that is at terminal c and d so it is vcd having the polarity plus and minus and its magnitude will be mu times vab where mu is the voltage gain it is a constant and vab is the voltage across this particular ab terminal so if this voltage will vary by some multiplication this voltage will change that's why it is a dependent source so this voltage source is depending on the voltage available across terminals a and b that's why it is a voltage controlled voltage source this is a voltage source and it is controlled by this voltage available across ab then second is voltage controlled current source so this voltage controlled current source means this voltage across ab is controlling this current this is a current source of magnitude gm into vab so gm is a transconductance it's a constant and vab 
is the voltage across this ab terminal so it is voltage controlled current source so the current source amount of current available at c and d terminals will be controlled by this voltage available across ab so that is voltage controlled current source then comes current controlled voltage source so here is the voltage available across terminal c and d it is vcd having polarity plus and minus so this voltage it is given by r into iab where r is the trans resistance or mutual resistance that is a constant and iab is the current flowing through this a and b terminal that is iab so it is proportional to current flowing through this particular component iab and that's why it is called as current controlled voltage source the voltage available here is the voltage and this voltage is being controlled by the current flowing through a and b terminal so that is r times iab that's why it is current controlled voltage source then next type is your current controlled previous slide last topic in this is the last type is the current controlled current source so current controlled current source means here is your current source that is beta into iab beta is the constant it is current given and iab is the current flowing through this a and b terminal so this iab will be controlling this current which is flowing through this particular c and d terminal okay so these are the voltage for uh, dependent and independent sources so dependent and independent source example so here is this is the uh, independent voltage source this is the dependent source and this is given as 10i given by 10i so it is a voltage source which is controlled by this current so it is current controlled voltage source as polarity is given it is a voltage source and here the amount of current on which it depends is given so it is current controlled voltage source and it is controlled by which current so it is controlled by i amount of current which is flowing through this c particular element so this current i which is flowing through c will control the amount of voltage available here so that is the dependent source so this is depending on the value of current over here and this high voltage source is a independent source which is not at all depending on any of the current or voltage in the circuit okay so now source transformation so in some circuits if you want to simplify you have to transfer the sources from one place to another so that is voltage transformation and current source transformation so that is source transformation if you want to uh, if you are having a voltage source then there will be a series resistance for this voltage source that you know if you want to transfer this voltage source into current source then you have to transform it like this there will be a current source and a resistance in parallel with this current source so this will be transformation and the magnitude of this current will be given by v upon this rsp series resistance so voltage upon this series resistance will be magnitude of this current source and the same series resistance will come in parallel to this current source now so this is a voltage source transformed into current source so this is source transformation voltage source i have transformed into a current source 
now reverse is also possible current source can be transformed into a voltage source so current source can be transformed into voltage source that is also possible if it is a voltage source having reverse polarity then the direction of current will be only opposite but the magnitude will be same so it is shown here voltage terminal is positive here negative here so direction of current is to upward here it is negative and positive voltage so direction of current is downward so this is voltage source to current source transformation and this is current source to voltage source if current source is available along with a resistance in parallel to that then this combination you can transform into a voltage source along with a series resistance so this i if it is having the resistance rsh in parallel to that then this voltage source will become this i into r so i into rsh will be magnitude of this voltage and the resistance in series will be this the resistance which was across this current source it will come in series with this voltage source same is for this if the direction of current source is in downward direction then only the polarity will change the remaining will remain same that is the magnitude will be i into rsh understood so this is voltage uh, source transformation so in some uh, means how to make use of this source transformation so let us say in a particular example you have given a current source in parallel with a resistance a voltage source series with resistances a such type of network is given to you and it is asked to convert it in a single source and a single resistor so it may be a voltage source or it may be a current source with one source and one resistance so if you want to solve this numerical then what you will do either you have to convert this voltage source and series resistance to a current source with parallel resistance same as this and this so that the magnitude of this source will become current source will become 6 divided by 3 so it will be 2 ampere and, and in parallel with 3 ohm so you can see here 2 ampere direction here positive is at bottom so it will be downward direction and a resistance in parallel similarly i have converted all these so this is converted then you know that you can add this resistor uh, current sources in series so you can add them then convert them into voltage sources and all you can do and you can finally you can convert it in a vol one voltage source and one resistance so this is the source transformation now next comes source shifting but before that i think we are running out of time so will log out and log in again so if you will log in again we'll start the lecture from this source transformation okay so please log out and log in again